This ultra-tiny desktop computer is actually a full-fledged gaming PC with a real RTX GPU built in. What I've got here is a mini PC and it actually doesn't have a name. I picked it up on AliExpress around two months ago and it just showed up a couple days ago. So shipping was super slow, but it's known as the mini gaming PC with, I guess they were trying to say with Intel i7 13 620H, NVIDIA RTX 4060 support, Windows 10 Linux. And over there, you can find a ton of different mini gaming PCs ranging from the GTX 1650 all the way up to the RTX 4090. I wanted to pick something up with that 4060, just kind of a mid-range setup here. And the price on it wasn't horrible, but you could probably build a much larger desktop PC that's going to outperform this for around the same price or maybe even cheaper. But you're not going to get this kind of form factor. This thing is absolutely tiny. In this video, we're going to see how this thing performs. We're also going to do a quick teardown. But before we get into it, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys. On October 14th of 2025, Microsoft is going to be ending support for Windows 10. So this is a perfect time to pick up a Windows 11 Pro key from URCD Key. And right now, if you use code ETA, you can get 25% off. So at checkout, we'll just enter the code ETA. That's going to bring the price down to $22.88. They're going to email you that key and then you can activate windows speaking of that let's head over to a new pc that i recently built as you can see we're running windows 11 and from settings we're going to go to activation settings it's going to tell us that we're not active we don't have a key installed so we're just going to paste it right in here choose next it's going to activate windows for us and we're ready to go if you're in need of cheap windows keys i'll leave a link in the description and remember you can use code eta for 25 percent off other than the mini PC itself, the only other thing this came with was a 230 watt power supply, so we should have plenty for this mini PC. And just to kind of give you an idea of the size, I recently put together this relatively small form factor gaming PC on the channel. I'll leave a link to that video in the description. It is much smaller than my main desktop, but you can see it still dwarfs the mini gaming PC here. When it comes to the overall specs, they were only offering one variant at the time I picked this up, and we've got the Intel Core i7-13620H. With this, we have 10 cores, 16 threads, and it's configured as 10 performance cores up to 4.9 GHz, and 4 efficiency cores up to 3.6. It does have 16 GB of non-user replaceable RAM running at 5200 MHz. And what makes this a gaming PC is the fact that it contains an NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060, albeit it's a laptop variant with 8 gigs of VRAM. It's got one M.2 2280 slot, 512 gigabyte drive came pre-installed. There's another M.2 2242 slot, so you can add a smaller SSD over there. It's got Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.1, and it's running Windows 11. I was really interested to take a look at the internals of this thing, and it actually took quite a bit to get it apart. I pulled the bottom off and I cannot access the bottom where the uh, storage is. I'd have to pull the whole main board out, and that's really the only upgrade we've got here. You can upgrade the storage. You can't upgrade the RAM because it is soldered to the board. It's got a dual fan cooling system here. All of the air comes out of the back. But when getting in here, I actually wasn't expecting this. We've got a pretty beefy heat sink here that acts as a cooler for the CPU and GPU. And to my surprise, it's actually using an MXM RTX 4060 GPU. So it's a separate card slapped on the top here. And we've been seeing a lot of Chinese manufacturers doing this with their mini gaming PCs. Last year, a company released a couple powered by the RTX 4070 all the way up to the RTX 4090. But with this, we've only got the RTX 4060. It's a laptop MXM card. And hopefully this cooling system can keep up with the GPU and CPU. But either way, I do think that this is a really interesting setup. Getting in here a bit closer, because there's a couple things that I wanted to show you. And as you can see, we've got that 13th gen Intel Core i7-13620H, 10 cores, 16 threads. This is soldered RAM running at 5200 megahertz, and I've only got 16 gigs here. But of course, we've got that NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4060 laptop GPU with eight gigs of VRAM. Taking a look at the chip itself, I wanted to uh, see what kind of TDP this is running at. We'll stress it out with CPU-Z, and right down here, I'll zoom in just a bit. We're right there at a sustained 65 watt TDP. And I'll tell you, while you're gaming, this is gonna be around 45 watts. But yeah, if you needed it, it'll do up to 65. 
And the last thing I wanted to show you here was the TGP on this GPU. 90 to 95 watts, and this is without an overclock. But from something like MSI Afterburner, we could overclock just a bit here. There's no fan control and there's no power limit control because it's a laptop GPU. But if we did a little bit of overclocking here, let's go to, let's go up 200 megahertz and see what happens. We can get close to 100 watts with this. So we've got a full power RTX 4060 laptop GPU here. I'm not going to overclock uh, for this video here. I just want to leave it at those stock clocks and see what it does. But one thing I'm a little worried about here are CPU and GPU temps. I mean, we've got that dual fan cooler, but they're all connected together. And if that 4060 is running it up to almost 100 watts there, we've got a 65 watt TDP over on that uh, CPU. This thing could probably get quite hot. But the first thing I did was run some benchmarks. So let's take a look at those. Single core, 2033, multi, 11,912. For a mobile chip and a small form factor PC, not bad at all. Next up, we've got 3D Mark Steel Nomad, came in with a total score of 2,242 and an FPS of 22.43. And the last one I ran was Time Spy. We got a pretty impressive score of 10,227. So with those synthetics out of the way, now it's time to jump into some real world gaming. And the first one we have is Cyberpunk 2077. So here it is at 1440p high settings with DLSS set to balanced and we're up over 80 FPS on average. I know that the RTX 4060 isn't considered a 1440p card because you really can't ultra everything out. But if you take it down the high with some DLSS, it still looks great and plays just fine. Taking a look at the CPU and GPU temps here, that CPU is getting a bit toasty, but again, we're not pulling up to 75 watts while gaming, around 42, 45 watts, and the GPU is staying a little cooler than the CPU itself. Next up, Marvel Rivals, and for all of these games, I didn't use any frame gen. We can get more out of a lot of these games because DLSS frame gen is available for the RTX 4060. Not multi-frame gen, but we can almost double the frame rate on a lot of the games that support it. Right now, we've got this at 1440p high with DLSS set to balance, just like we ran Cyberpunk, and we're getting a really decent frame rate here. Of course, I had to test out Forza Horizon 5, 1440p, Ultra, no DLSS, we don't need it here. And if you wanted to run this at extreme settings, you definitely could, seeing an average of around 85 with extreme settings or over 120 FPS set to Ultra. Here's Spider-Man 2, and this game has been a bit hit or miss on these lower end GPUs. And originally I went into this at 1440p very high with DLSS set to quality just want to get over that 60 mark so i had to back it down to high settings with dlss set to balance and now it's a fully playable experience wanted to throw at least one fighting game in here we've got mortal kombat 1 1440p very high dlss set to quality actually runs really well on this little system here at a consistent 60 fps Next game I tested was Borderlands 3, and to tell you the truth, probably going down to 1080 with this would uh, work out much better. We're at 1440p Ultra, but I did take the resolution scale down to 75%. So at 1080, we could get a little more out of it at Ultra, and it's still going to look really good. And the final game I tested here was Doom the Dark Ages. We have to take this down to medium at 1440p with DLSS set to balance. And by the end of this run, we had an average of 71 FPS. But even at 1440p medium with DLSS set to balance, from the settings, it's stating that we're getting really close to going over our VRAM amount. So dropping some of those settings down would really help out or even just lowering that resolution in total. The last thing I wanted to talk about here were those CPU and GPU temps. Some of you may have noticed that that CPU was getting a bit hot and I kind of suspected this would happen. From the BIOS, I found no way, at least in the regular BIOS, to up the fan speed on this thing. So uh, if I can dig a bit deeper, I may be able to up it. 
But right now, when it comes to CPU temps at 1440p gaming, we averaged 77 degrees Celsius and the max recorded was 86. I do believe the thermal throttle on this is set around 86, so I'm pretty sure we hit it there. When it comes to GPU temps, average 1440p gaming, 70 degrees Celsius, and the max recorded was 76, so it's definitely not getting as hot as that CPU, but it would be nice to easily change the fan curve here. I mean, even if it got a little bit louder, I'd be fine with it as long as we're not hitting thermal throttle. We did see some pretty decent performance out of this thing, but those thermals are kind of up there. And if I let it run any longer, I mean, I'm sure it would just keep at thermal throttle there with a 1440p game. The whole unit itself does feel a bit cheap. Only one of the side panels is metal and the rings around the outside are actually made of plastic. Going into this, I wasn't expecting that much. And after waiting two months for this thing, I figured I just lost my money. I was going to try to file a claim, but then I finally got tracking on it and everything. Personally, I do love the form factor, but unfortunately, I mean, that thermal throttle is really limiting what this thing can do. But if you're still interested in learning a little more, I will leave some links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on this, just let me know in the comments below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.